So you said April 11th, that's eight days from now, and you're rolling out 5G early. What happened? No, I think the team has been working relentlessly to give our customers this fantastic experience with 5G, and actually our test is going so well, so why wait when you have some good news for our customers? So we decided to turn it down today. We are selling the, the Moto 5G phone, the Z3 in the stores, and you can experience fantastic experience with the ultra-wide one 5G networks in, in those two cities right now. So I saw headlines this morning about Samsung launching in South Korea saying that they were going to be first. I guess this takes some wind out of their sales. But I've also heard that the bulk of 5G phones and the bulk of the real consumer 5G push shouldn't be expected this year. Is this a change to that expectation? How many 5G phones do you expect to have? And do you have an update on the pace of major city rollouts for Verizon in 2019? Uh, first of all, on the handset side, you're going to see many more handsets on 5G coming out this year. We, as you know, we have announced two that we will have just in the first half of the year. Uh, and the Motorola, of course, is the one going with right now. And we're going to have a Samsung a little bit later in this quarter. So that's the two. And then we have others coming in the second half. Uh, so we're going to see more 5G phones than probably were expected. Uh, we have at least a, a good relationship with all of those guys. When it comes to our rollout, we start with these two cities right now. We're going to do more than 30 markets this year, and, and uh, we're working in all these markets right now. So we're going to turn them up as soon as they're ready, and we feel that we can give the experience that we want to give to our customers when it comes to 5G, meaning the real 5G, at the same time have the most reliable 4G network. So we think a lot about our customers and, and how we're going to treat them in this, but it's a great day for us to be first in the world with a... Uh, with 5G smartphones and uh, turning on the network. I think that tells a lot about the team that I have around me and, and the partners we have. Hey, Hans, um, we've talked about 5G uh, at some length here. Our viewers kind of understand it, but I wonder how much of a marketing push you're going to make to educate consumers about what it is and what they can do with it. No, we're going to do a lot about education around it. Our stores have been trained now to explain what you can do with it. And, of course, we talk about the ultra-wideband here. We're going to have uh, speeds up to 1 gigabit per second compared to uh, sort of 50 megabits per second in 4G. So it's, it's a 20 times faster when you're going to be in the 5G zone. And of course, you can do so much with it. At the same time, you're going to have download speed up to 300 megabits per second, which means that you can take down th things much quicker. And the latency is probably coming to so some 30 milliseconds compared to 100 today. And that's just the start of 5G. And what we saw in 4G, of course, enormous innovation when you see this type of all of capabilities coming out on the network. So I, I, you're going to see so much innovation on 5G. And I said it before, it's not a small uh, sort of evolution from 4G. It's a, it's a quantum leap going to 5G from, uh, from 4G. So uh, you're going to see a lot of innovation, new applications coming on top of the 5G networks. Hans Morgan here. 5G has been a huge undertaking, not just for Verizon, but for, for, for the sector overall in terms of the spending and what it's taking to roll out this infrastructure. I know adding this to Chicago and Minneapolis today, and, and you just mentioned that you are in conversations with handset makers uh, about their, their capabilities as well, but it's going to take some time for consumers to adopt those new phones and actually start plugging into this. So at, at what point between city rollouts, between Who's tapping into the service? Would you expect to start making money on all of these investments? You are absolutely right. It's going to the adoption of new technology, new handset takes always a time, and we have said that we probably, uh, from a significant point of view, not going to see. Uh, any impact on our revenue until 2021. So I think that's uh, that's how long it takes when you are in the size of us. But remember, we have the most reliable uh, 4G network where all our great customers are on right now. And now we're adding to be first on 5G. So you get both of being first and having best quality on the latest technology. So I think that combination also will change a little bit uh, the narrative in the market. And of course, we're going to see more handset manufacturers coming up here. So I think that's what we're working with every day here. Hans, you had said 30 U.S. cities in 2019. Is that still the number? At least, I said. Okay, so at least 30 U.S. cities covered by 5G in 2019. In terms of a percentage of the U.S. population covered by 5G signal from Verizon, what's the update there? 
Oh, it's basically, this is all the major cities you can think about in the U.S. So we have only named a, named a couple of them right now. We're going to name them as soon as we open it up. We want to make the marketing very clear to our customers in these markets. Now we have 5G here, and this is what you can do with it, and now we can buy the phone. So we're going to do it city by city. So you're going to see that happening uh, across the, the year right now. So that, that's going to be a rolling thunder for us. Uh, two questions, Hans. One is... Um... Do you expect to make any updates to forward guidance on earnings as a result of any of this? And number two, why was it so key to be uh, early, to be first? I think number one, no, there's no new updates. We had our investor day in the beginning of, uh, of the year in, in, in March where we made all the guidance we are planning to do. We're not doing any new guidance based on this. This is part of what we are executing on. Uh, so I think that's, uh, that's where we are on that. Uh, what was the second question? Uh, why was it so key to be first on this? I think that, first of all, it's for our customers. We want our customers to experience 5G first in the world. It's so important for us. We have a fantastic base of customers. And, of course, they all have enjoyed a fantastic 4G journey with us. And we want to give them 5G first in the world. That, that's important for us. We have a great engineering team that has, together with the partners, pushed the envelope to actually moving the data probably one year, maybe two years ahead of the original plan where a 5G smartphone would be in the market. And here we stand, Verizon, first in the world with a 5G smartphone. And I'm so proud of the team and what we can give to our customers. Hans, I want to get your thoughts on the supplier side of this. Obviously, a lot of focus on, on the role that Chinese companies are playing in 5G rollout worldwide, really. With the U.S. and China talks, trade talks continuing right now with all the tensions brewing around companies like Huawei, how necessary is it uh, in terms of that rollout here in the U.S. to have some of those international players involved? We stand here today. Uh, we have no Chinese vendor at all, and we're first in the world. So I think that uh, the combination of the strength of our company together with our partners, we made it happen before anyone else in the world. So let, we will continue on that execution, and we are very happy with the partners we have. We have European, North European uh, vendors that have uh, supplied their equipment. We have, of course, Motorola, and we have Qualcomm being part of this. So uh, it has been an important journey for us to work with those partners, and that works fine for us, and we are first in the world, and we are deploying more 5G than many others in the rest of the world right now. Hans, there are calls for specific tests and standards around 5G equipment and security as being the fair way to determine what sorts of equipment, whether it's Huawei or from, from wherever, should be allowed in a network. What standards need to be put in, in, in place in the U.S. and internationally uh, to, to assure that it's fair? No, I think that if you think about ourselves and talk more about what we're doing, I mean, we have the highest standards on, on, on quality in our network and security, and we will continue to have that going into 5G when you can connect up to 1 million connected devices per square kilometers instead of 100,000. Of course, we're going to have so much more interconnectivity, so the security aspect or, and, the, uh, and sort of the privacy of, of those different devices is going to be important. And that's part of what we're building right now. So for us, this is key, but this is just continue with the journey that Verizon has had all the time with the quality, the performance, the security of our networks. That just rolls into 5G. There's no difference with that. We just have even more connectivity and more connected devices going into 5G with higher speeds, better latency, and higher throughputs. A lot of shade thrown AT&T's direction over the past several weeks and months over 5GE, uh, the, the little bug that they put on some phones. It's not really 5G, but they say it's faster than the 4G that they had been offering. What do you think was the impact of AT&T doing that and your announcement today on the public's perception of what 5G really is? I cannot really judge that. I mean, we have been focusing on delivering a real 5G all the time. And, and uh, as I said, we did the 5G home last year, which is the substitution of fiber to the home with 5G. Now we do the smartphone, and we will continue with new type of service on 5G, especially for enterprises uh, at the latter part of this year. For us, this is sort of a transformative thing we give to our customers, and it has to really be that transformative. Uh, so that's why we also have been very prudent when we go through it and we launch it. We want to have a really good experience that is, is a 
quantum leap from what you have in 4G. So we'll continue with that. And, and of course, there's a lot of marketing coming out in, a, in sort of to consumers. We will tell to our customers, this is really what it means to get 5G in your hands. And they're going to realize it today. The ones that have a 5G motor phone in, in, in Minneapolis and Chicago, they're going to see a significant difference. And that's what we really want to give our customers. Hans, uh, UBS has a note out today, uh, skeptical about Apple's ability to ship a 5G phone by 2020. They specifically say, we do not believe Intel will be ready with a single chip compatible uh, in time. How would you characterize uh, chip makers' ability to supply this on the phone side? Uh, so what we have seen so far, we, we, we know that uh, Qualcomm is very advanced and they are in the phones that we're going to launch here in the first... Uh, first half of this year. So, of course, uh, there are, of course, others as well. And uh, ultimately, we, we need many ships, uh, ships and manufacturers in the industry, in an ecosystem. But right now, we have seen the early ones that have been developing has been Qualcomm. So, uh, but I, I know there are many others doing it at the same time. And for us and our customers, it's important to have that ecosystem with many ships and manufacturers as well as many uh, handset manufacturers when it comes to the smartphone world.